Hello, hello, high-level listeners. How's the weather where you are today? Is it clouding over, warming up? Is it frozen over? Is it pouring down? If you aren't familiar with some of these phrasal verbs, don't worry. We're here to help you learn some everyday, commonly used phrasal verbs all about the weather. Yes, that's right. We're here with another episode of our phrasal verb series where we share a list of phrasal verbs around a single topic to help you speak fluently and confidently using real life everyday vocabulary. As Kat mentioned, we're talking about the weather. So we're here to share our most favorite commonly spoken English phrasal verbs, which will be really helpful when you're talking about the weather, especially with native English speakers. So let's get started. Like always in these videos, we'll explain each phrasal verb very simply, giving you a good definition. Then we're going to give you four example sentences for each one. Here's the first one. Number one, to clear up. To clear up. The sky becomes clear after the rain or the clouds. So when you have these clouds and the clouds move away and you can see the blue sky, you can see the clear sky, we say that the sky clears up, to clear up. The rain is stopped and it looks like the sky is starting to clear up. The rain has stopped and it looks like the sky is starting to clear up. Ugh, I hope it clears up soon so we can go for a walk. I hope it clears up soon so we can go for a walk. Yes, this is one of these phrasal verbs that always stays together. You can't separate it. For example, it was cloudy this morning, but it cleared up by lunchtime. It was cloudy this morning, but it cleared up by lunchtime. If the fog clears up, we'll be able to see the mountains. If the fog clears up, we'll be able to see the mountains. Our next phrasal verb is different between the UK and the US. I'm from the UK and I say rain off. Rain off. This is for an event, a party, a concert, a barbecue. If there is a lot of rain, you have to cancel the event. The event is rained off. So the concert last night was rained off and everyone was disappointed. So there was a concert, but there was lots of rain, so they cancelled it. The concert last night was rained off, and everyone was disappointed. Another example, I'm worried the fireworks display might be rained off. Again, there's a fireworks display, but it's raining now. Maybe they will cancel the display. I'm worried the fireworks display might be rained off. All right, so we've got basically the exact same phrase, except in the United States, we would say it got rained out, rained out. So we're just changing that second word, but it has the same meaning. It got canceled. It got canceled. So the game got rained out. So tomorrow they're going to play two games. The game got rained out. So tomorrow they're going to play two games. Uh, I hope the picnic doesn't get rained out. I hope the picnic doesn't get rained out. Our next phrasal verb is to dry up. To dry up. This is one of those phrasal verbs where we're going to add in a little word to mean 100% completely. So you can dry the table, but if something dries up, then it's completely dry, okay? So this is when the water disappears, maybe from a river, a lake, or the puddles on the ground after the rain, they would dry up, dry up. So the puddles are starting to dry up after the rain. The puddles are starting to dry up after the rain, to dry 100%. That means there's no more puddles anymore. The river has dried up because there hasn't been enough rain. The river has dried up. That means there is no river. There's no flowing water anymore. The river is dried up because there hasn't been enough rain. The more examples. 
the ground dried up quickly in the hot sun. The ground dried up quickly in the hot sun. That's the past tense, so dry up. I hope the garden dries up before our friends arrive. I hope the garden dries up before our friends arrive. Next phrasal verb about the weather is cloud over. Cloud over. This is when you have a blue sky and then big grey or white clouds come in and cover the sky above your head. All you can see above you is grey clouds. It clouds over. The subject is usually it. It clouds over. It being the weather. So when the sky becomes covered with clouds, it clouds over. Some example sentences. I hope it doesn't cloud over before the sunset. Maybe we want to watch the sun go down. It's going to be nice. If there's clouds in the way, we can't see the sun. So I hope it doesn't cloud over before sunset. The weather forecast said it would cloud over later today. Sometimes it's a good thing. You don't want to go outside under the sun and get burned or heat stroke. So sometimes clouds can be good. They can protect you. So the weather forecast said it would cloud over later today. The sky is starting to cloud over. It might rain later. So our beautiful blue sky is clouding over. That means all the clouds are coming over us and blocking the sun, blocking the blue sky. The sky is starting to cloud over. It might rain later. It clouded over this afternoon, and now it looks like it's going to storm. It clouded over this afternoon, and now it looks like it's going to storm. All right, so we have another phrase, to die down, to die down. This is usually when we have a, a type of weather, like a storm or lots of wind, and it's kind of getting a little crazy, and then it starts to calm down. And we often use the phrase to die down. So that's when the wind or the storm loses all of its strength and the sky goes back to normal, right? The wind is starting to die down now. So the wind was really fast. The breeze was blowing really hard. And now things are calming down. The wind is starting to die down now. The storm died down overnight, thankfully. The storm died down overnight, thankfully. So this big, heavy storm, lots of thunder, lots of lightning, lots of wind, finally stopped, right? The storm died down. It's usually quite slow, okay? It goes from really heavy to slow, so it's dying down. The more examples. The waves are dying down now, so it's probably safe to swim. The waves are dying down, so it's probably safe to swim. As you can tell, we can use this about the waves and water. Sometimes it's very windy by the sea, so you can also use this for the waves. It looks like the rain is dying down. Shall we go? It looks like the rain is dying down. Shall we go? Maybe we're hiding inside a cafe or indoors because we don't want to get wet. But when the rain loses strength, it dies down. So maybe we can go out. Okay, another phrasal verb related to rain or snow is let up. Let up. The weather lets up or the rain lets up. This is similar to die down in that the rain becomes less intense. The rain loses strength. It doesn't rain as hard. The rain gets lighter. It starts to let up. So again, the subject is often it. It's letting up. It's starting to let up means it's becoming less intense, especially rain or snow. For example, it looks like it's letting up. Maybe it's safe enough to drive now. It looks like it's letting up. Maybe it's safe enough to drive now. The fog is supposed to let up in an hour, so let's wait until then. The fog is supposed to let up in an hour. So let's wait 
until then. Some more examples. The rain has finally let up. So it was raining very heavily, and now it's not raining so heavily. Maybe it's raining a bit more lightly. The rain has finally let up. The snow hasn't let up all day. That means the snow hasn't stopped yet. The snow hasn't let up all day, just continued very intensely. The snow hasn't let up all day. Our next one, we're going to talk about the temperature. So if things are going from cold to hot, we usually use the word warming up. Warming up. Okay, so warm is warmer. <laughs> warm is hotter than cold, but less than hot. Okay, so we use this word a lot, warming up. It's really starting to warm up outside. Maybe this morning, the temperature was quite cold, and then in the middle of the day, it's getting hot, right? So it's starting to warm up. It's starting to warm up. It's really starting to warm up outside. It's supposed to warm up this weekend, so I'm planning a trip to the beach. It's supposed to warm up this weekend, so I'm planning a trip to the beach. The more examples. It really starts warming up at around noon. It really starts warming up at around noon. Noon being 12 p.m. or midday. It's already hot and it's going to warm up more. It's already hot and it's only going to warm up more. So warm up is just an increase in temperature. It's already hot and it's going to warm up more. So it's the temperature increasing. The next phrasal verb is back to rain. And we've got two different ones, one for the UK and one for the US. The one from the UK for heavy, heavy rain is chuck it down. I love chuck this phrase. It down. <laughs> yes, right. Kat enjoyed this one. Uh, I only hear this in the UK, maybe other English speaking countries, but I'm not sure. When it's raining very heavily, it's chucking it down. It's important that you always put it between. Chuck it down. It's always in that structure. It's been chucking it down all day. So it's been raining really, really hard all day. You probably shouldn't go outside. Maybe you shouldn't even drive. An umbrella's probably not enough. It's been chucking it down all day. Another example, of course, as soon as we went outside, it started chucking it down. Chuck literally means to throw. So it's like the sky is throwing rain down. That's yeah. what it literally I, means. It's such a good phrase, honestly. It's one of my favorite British <laughs> phrases. I even like to use it sometimes. Oh, it's chucking it down. It just is such a, like, the chucking it down. Like, I don't know. It's so British. It's so British. I really do it's like good. that you one. You can put a lot of power into it. Chuck. Now, it's satisfying um, to say. Exactly, exactly. So Mark's phrase is really good. And like he said, don't separate these words. Chucking it down. That's just kind of the phrase. That's what we use. Now, we've got another phrase in American English. Pouring down. Pouring down. Now, this, however, is an interesting phrase because we could say it's pouring or it's pouring down. I mean, there's not much difference in between these two. It's just still common to say, oh, yeah, it's pouring down outside. Oh, it's pouring outside. It means the same thing, but sometimes uh, with phrasal verbs, um, English speakers just like to add a couple of extra words in there just to make it difficult for our students. So um, a couple of examples. It's pouring down outside. You'll need an umbrella. It's pouring down outside. You'll need an umbrella. It poured down all night, and now the streets are flooded. It poured down all night, and now the streets are flooded. Yes, we can use these sentences. It's pouring outside. It's pouring down outside. It poured down all night. It poured all night. Very common to use either one of them, but I would say that 
native speakers tend to just, you know, trickle in that like little sprinkle in that little bit of an extra word there. Our next phrase is to blow over. Blow over. So to blow over. To blow over. Now, it has a kind of a literal meaning, meaning, you know, the storm is literally blowing over your head. But we can also use it as when it um, kind of stops or it goes quickly through a place, okay? So if something blows over, then it's done. It's finished, okay? So we've got a couple of phrases here. The storm blew over quickly and now the sun is shining. So the storm blew over quickly. That means it came and went, all right? It was fast. The storm blew over quickly, and now the sun is shining. Oh, thank goodness. I was worried about the hurricane, but it blew over without causing much damage. I was worried about the hurricane, but it blew over without causing much damage. So we've got a couple of words here. Hurricane. A hurricane is a very big, big storm that's very common in the United States. But it blew over. So you think, okay, well, a hurricane, a lot of rain, a lot of uh, flooding could be very dangerous with the winds, but it blew over. That means it passed without causing much damage. Damage is when things get broken because of the storm. Houses, windows, doors, um, gates, they get broken. So that's the damage. But thankfully, it blew over without causing much damage. Yes, uh, as Kat mentioned, it's often used with very extreme weather, such as storms. But you can use it generally for any bad weather, even rain. For example, I guess we'll just stay inside until the rain blows over. I guess we'll just stay inside until the rain blows over, until the rain finishes and goes away. They said the storm blew over after a few hours. It wasn't too bad. They said the storm blew over after a few hours. It wasn't too bad. Okay, the last phrasal verb we have here today is about very, very cold weather. If the temperature goes below zero, you get ice and the weather freezes. If something is freezing, it's below zero or it feels very, very cold. If you get ice on some water, ice on the road, ice on a river or a lake, then it freezes over. Freeze over. Um, we'll show you some examples in a moment, but anything that gets covered in ice, solid ice, freezes over. It's so cold that even the puddles have frozen over. It's so cold that even the puddles have frozen over. So those little pockets of water are covered in ice. They have frozen over. One more example. The pipes in my house froze over during the winter storm. The pipes in my house froze over during the winter storm. That means the water inside the pipe is frozen. Now water cannot go through. Ice is blocking it. So this can be a serious problem if you live in a cold country with a cold climate and really cold winters. Things can freeze over and stop working. I think, too, of the word, if something has frozen over, I think that there is thick, solid ice. So the pond has frozen over, so we can go ice skating. The pond is frozen over, or we can also use frozen solid, so we can go ice skating. So... Please don't. If there's a tiny, thin bit of ice, that's definitely freezing over, but not frozen solid. Not frozen solid. So the lake froze over last night, so I couldn't go fishing. I wanted to go fishing. You need water to go fishing. This is ice. So the lake froze over last night, so I couldn't go fishing. All right, there you have it. Another amazing list of useful phrasal verbs and phrases that you can use when you're talking about the weather in English. As we love to hear comments from all of our students, which one was your favorite phrase from the video today? Were any phrasal verbs new ones for you? 
Let us know in the comments below. We read and reply to each one, so get in touch. Yes, we do. Uh, if you really liked the video today, please like and hit subscribe. You can get videos from us up to three times a week if you subscribe. Uh, don't forget, you can also get a PDF transcript of this episode and all of our other ones, which you can download and study on your own if you become a high-level listening member. And you can see details on how to do that in the description below. Thank you so much, everyone. We really do appreciate it. So see you next time for our next video here on High Level Listening.